All right, hello everybody. So where did we last leave off? We talked about the dynamic systems theory. So we started to introduce one of our two systems theories in total. So the second one is ecological systems theory. And this might sound a little familiar. I've talked about it a couple of times now because it is our homework number one topic. So do tune in uh, closely and uh, feel free to ask me questions as they come up later. But let's dive into it. So ecology is the study of relationships between organisms and their environment. And the ecological systems theory is a relationship between children's development and their environmental contexts. So basically it's saying that multiple environmental contexts exist uh, in children's development. They're going to impact children um, on different layers of based on all the contexts in their you know, immediate household and their community and even things like government and the timing of events even matters. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. So um, the most influential part of the ecological systems theory is Yuri Bronfenbrenner's bioecological model. And that's what we're gonna be using in homework number one. So let's walk through this diagram. I know it's a little overwhelming at first glance, a lot going on here in this, in this diagram, but we'll break it down and it, it'll make more sense as we go along, I think. So as you can see, child is sitting here at the center of the model and everything you see here is a context in their life uh, that's going to either directly or indirectly impact their development that's the idea of this of this model of this theory so the microsystem is our first level as you can see it's the you know the first peach colored uh circle around the child it's the closest to the child and uh the word microsystem we break that down into the roots Micro means small, right? Words like microscope, microorganism. You've probably heard a bunch of words that have micro in it, and it means small. And that makes sense because it's the smallest system, the most direct system that's going to impact the child. And what's included in the microsystem is things like uh, their direct home setting. And this includes, you know, sibling, parents, and the child themselves. Um, it could include religious settings like churches, uh, it includes our, the schools that the child goes to, and the neighborhood. So these are all, as you can see, pretty small scale direct influences on the child in their daily lives. It's the settings that they're interacting with daily or regularly. So those face-to-face -face settings, that's the microsystem. So if we move outward, you can see this blue ring. This is the next system, and it's called the mesosystem. So meso means middle. I don't have any fancy words to help you link that connection, but uh, meso does mean middle as a root word. Um, so that kind of makes sense because you'll see that there's actually white arrows inside this ring connecting the um, items together. And what these items are, are you may notice they're things that are from the microsystem, home, school, neighborhood, religious settings. It's the same things that are in here. What the mesosystem is, is it's the interconnections between these things that are in the child's microsystem. Because these things don't necessarily stand alone all the time. They're gonna interact sometimes, right? Like an uh, example would be a parent's involvement at the child's school. So maybe a parent-teacher conference is a good example of the mesosystem at work. Uh, it's the parent and the school directly communicating with each other. Um, so that's one example of the mesosystem at work. Um, how, is, how are the parts of the microsystem interacting with each other? Because that also is gonna create, uh, you could create changes in how the child develops. So um, cohesion between these aspects of the microsystem uh, could make a difference in the child's development, right? So our parents, teachers, and peer goals consistent or do they conflict and that's where cohesion comes into play in the MESA system um, how they interact might make a difference on the child's development for example maybe parents and teachers are pushing a, a child to go to college after high school but maybe their peers are pushing for a different route like forming a rock band to play music full-time um, so as you can see you know 
cohesion can make a difference in the mess of system, uh, depending, it'll make a difference in how the child, uh, their next course of action and consequently how they might develop. Um, so that's the mesosystem. system. We move out further, we have this kind of yellowish orange ring, and this is called the exosystem. Uh, exo is synonymous with, you know, external or from the outside. So that actually makes sense because as you can see, we're moving out further from the child and the exosystem encompasses the smaller systems that we already went over, micro and meso. Um, it's from the outside and it's starting to become more indirect in its impact on the child, right? Microsystem is a very direct impact, settings of the daily life. Mesosystem is a little less direct, but still direct because it does involve those microsystem aspects. Now the exosystem, if you look at what's listed on this chart, we have like parent workplace, we have school board, mass media, and local government. Um, so these would be examples of the exosystem. They're indirectly impacting the child. So let's look at parent workplace. How does that indirectly impact a child? Uh, does the parent have a good wage and good benefits? Are they happy with their job? Or do they have poor pay, poor benefits, and not happy with their job, maybe very stressed from it every day? It could go one of two ways, and depending, it's going to impact their quality of care toward the child, right? If they're constantly stressed about their job or making enough money, that could have a big impact on how um, they're caregiving for the child, right? Um, so this, these could potentially indirectly impact the child. Um, and parents, friends can be involved here, um, the neighborhood as a whole, um, not necessarily neighbors, but neighborhood. And, you know, that kind of environment that's there could be part of the exosystem. So it's anything that's indirectly impacting the child, um, but it's still kind of a tangible setting uh, of some sort. And yeah, so it's external and direct impacts. If we move out further, we have this blue ring. This is the macro system. Now this is uh, one of our focuses in homework number one. Forgot to mention, microsystem is our other focus in homework number one. So maybe start thinking about your own upbringing. And what, what are some aspects of your microsystem as a child and as an adolescent? And then what are some aspects of your macro systems? How did that impact you? And we'll go over that now. So macro system, it's getting even more indirect. In fact, it's getting quite invisible. It's becoming more uh, abstract because we're looking at cultural values now. We're looking at governmental policies, looking at customs. So um, very broad, wide scale things that are not very tangible. They're more invisible things that are definitely still impacting the child. They're just not nearly as direct uh, or like a tangible setting. So it's the values, customs, resources of a larger culture. And this is going to shape what happens inside these smaller systems within the macro system, right? Uh, so laws for child protection or quality education or access to healthcare, these would all be part of the macro system. Uh, it also includes socioeconomic status or even ethnicity. You know, what are the uh, overall views and attitudes of the larger society or culture of an ethnic group or even like a, like a sexual minority group? So these are the kind of abstract things involved with the macro system that are definitely going to impact a child, but just very indirectly, right? So... It's kind of asking, is the larger culture supportive of the child's needs or not? Um, so it's even more indirect than the exosystem and it's almost invisible, like I said. So you can kind of think of it as society and culture as a whole. Um, and then we move out to the chrono system and it's getting even more broad. Um, so this big green part at the bottom, this is more about the timing of events in fact, you know, we break down the word chrono system. Chrono means time. We think of the word chronological, right? It means time. Um, so it's the timing of life altering events and transitions. Maybe it's a personal transition, like the death of a family member or birth of a sibling. It could be environmental events like natural disasters. It could even be socio-historical circumstances like 
you know, something that's rather current is the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, so basically, it's just saying that the timing of significant events can have effects on a child's development. Um, so if a sibling is born, or I guess a better example would be if a family member passes away when the child is just an infant, it's not going to have nearly as much of an impact on them as if, uh, as it would if um, the family member died when the child was older and they already established a strong relationship with them, became more cognizant and um, you know developed more. So that's kind of one example of the chrono system at work. The timing of things happening could make a difference in the child's development. So. In summary, don't be overwhelmed by this slide. This is actually just for you to kind of refer to later when you're working on your assignment to kind of help you if you're struggling. Um, but I'll just go over the top here. So kind of in summary, uh, the child is sitting at the center of five systems and all of them are impacting the child's development and they're all interacting and influencing each other, right? And the scope is getting wider and wider and more indirect as it moves away from a direct child. So uh, for homework number one, I am, what you're going to do is you're going to reflect on your own experience growing up. Think of examples of how the microsystem and the macrosystem shaped your own development. So you're going to think of an example for the macrosystem in childhood and an example in adolescence. And then you'll think of one example of the macrosystem in childhood and adolescence. Um, so that's the basic premise of homework number one. Um, I will give a tip. I won't read this word for word, but uh, this is for you to look at later again. But a uh, tip for me is, uh, you know, I've, something I've seen in the past is students will talk about a specific uh, cultural practice in their household, like a holiday they celebrate or um, a specific custom they practice regularly as part of their culture. And while that's awesome to, to talk about, and it is based on culture, what they're describing is more of a small scale direct influence, right? Kind of involves your family, um, your family's direct influence, and they fall in your microsystem, right? But they would use that as a macrosystem example. So um, you just want to be careful with that. Um, like saying, my family, we always celebrated Christmas and it taught me these things, you know, valuing family and whatever else. That's awesome, but it's a uh, pretty uh, direct, right? You're talking about family and things you actually tangibly did together directly in your household or at holiday gatherings. And it's more of a microsystem example, right? Um, an example that would be better is maybe I grew up in a Latinx household and there's unspoken gender roles embedded into Latinx culture. And those roles indirectly impacted me by X, Y, Z. Um, so if you're gonna use ethnic culture as an example, that's great. Uh, just be sure that you're focusing on the, the ideologies and values of the culture itself, not so much the everyday practices and interactions with family and church. So hopefully that's clear. Um, kind of keeping it to more of the abstract, like societal ideas rather than tangible practices. Um, and you don't even have to do ethnic culture. You can focus on socioeconomic status. Uh, how did this indirectly impact you? It could be positive or negative. Um, for example, if you maybe were on the lower end of socioeconomic status, you can talk about how this impacted your access to things like quality health care or being in a safe neighborhood or access to good quality food and how that impacted your development. You could also talk about political climate and the place you grew up in. How did this impact the laws and policies in your area? Did this support your development or not? Um, so just some things to think about. Uh, so I will end this here, but if you have questions, please let me know. I know this is a little dense. Uh, this is everything I just went over, but um, I'm here for you. So let me know if you have questions and um, thanks for tuning in everyone. Good luck with this assignment.